Well, if you haven't heard the recent speech by uh, the U.S. U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, how she blasted the uh, Security Council for its ongoing attacks against Israel when uh, the, the only democratic nation in the Middle East, then you're missing uh, a good speech that uh, kind of set the U.N. in its place. And I hope that this will be something that will continue for years to come, because if it is, that's going to play favorably for the United States. And frankly, there are two reasons why, two main reasons anyway, why I voted for Donald Trump and why I encourage my uh, listeners to do the same. Because number one, uh, I, he said he was going to end a conservative Supreme Court justice, which is what he's doing. And he also said he was going to put America first again. In other words, we're not going to stand behind and bow to anyone else. But this stand against terrorism and against everything that is unjust uh, regarding Israel is really kind of a bonus. I never expected him to come out and allow a speech of this nature to uh, be brought before the world. But if this is a sample of what we have to look forward to, you can believe that, that the United States is going to be blessed of God. Now this is what the, the, uh, the Bible says regarding the uh, blessing of Israel. It's found in Genesis 12, 3, and it says, And I will bless them that bless thee, talking about Israel, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Well, that's pretty cut and dry to me. I, uh, that's exactly what we're doing here. And, you know, you may be a Trump basher, and I'm sure he has a lot of things in his closet that need bashing. But so far, i got to stand up and applaud this man because he's doing exactly what he said he would do. And he's accomplishing many more things than I ever dreamed a president would try to accomplish. Now, he does have a lot of things on his plate right now, and he's trying to accomplish a lot of things in a very short amount of time. But i got to give him a, a standing ovation on the things that he's attempting to do as we speak. Because so far, it appears that he's trying to do the right thing. But I want you to go ahead and listen to this uh, video from Nikki and see what you think about it. Good morning. Um, first of all, as this is the first time I have dealt with this press corps, um, I just want to say that I hope that we can have a lot more conversations and um, continue to do these types of things. Um, but I'll ask that I will respect you if you'll respect me. So as we develop this relationship, um, we'll see how it goes. So the first thing I want to do is talk about what we just um, saw in there. The Security Council just finished its regular monthly meeting on Middle East issues. It's the first meeting like that that I've attended, and I have to say it was a bit strange. The Security Council is supposed to discuss how to maintain international peace and security. But at our meeting on the Middle East, the discussion was not about Hezbollah's illegal buildup of rockets in Lebanon. It was not about the money and weapons Iran provides to terrorists. It was not about how we defeat ISIS. It was not about how we hold Bashar al-Assad accountable for the slaughter of hundreds and thousands of civilians. No, instead the meeting focused on criticizing Israel, the one true democracy in the Middle East. I am new around here, but I understand that's how the council has operated month after month for decades. I'm here to say the United States will not turn a blind eye to this anymore. I am here to underscore the ironclad support of the United States for Israel. I'm here to emphasize the United States is determined to stand up to the UN's anti-Israel bias. We will never repeat the terrible mistake of Resolution 2334 and allow one-sided Security Council resolutions to condemn Israel. Instead, we will push for action on the real threats we face in the Middle East. We stand for peace. We support a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that is negotiated directly between the two parties, as President Trump reiterated in his meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday. The outrageously biased resolutions from the Security Council and the General Assembly only make peace harder to attain by discouraging one of the parties from going to the negotiating table. Incredibly, the UN Department of Political Affairs has an entire division devoted to Palestinian affairs. Imagine that. There is no division devoted to illegal missile launches from North Korea. 
There is no division devoted to the world's number one state sponsor of terror, Iran. The prejudiced approach to Israeli-Palestinian issues does the peace process no favors, and it bears no relationship to the reality of the world around us. The double standards are breathtaking. Just a few days ago, the United States sought, unsuccessfully, to have the Security Council condemn a terrorist attack to Israel, where the terrorists opened fire on people waiting for a bus and then stabbed others. The Security Council would not hesitate to condemn an attack like that in any other country, but not for Israel. The statement was blocked, and that's downright shameful. Israel exists in a region where others call for its complete destruction, and in a world where anti-Semitism is on the rise. These are threats that we should discuss at the United Nations as we continue working toward a comprehensive agreement that would end the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But outside of the UN, there is some good news. Israel's place in the world is changing. Israel is building up new diplomatic relationships. More and more countries recognize how much Israel contributes to the world. They are recognizing that Israel is a beacon of stability in a troubled region, and that Israel is at the forefront of innovation, entrepreneurship, and technolog technological discovery. It is the UN's anti-Israel bias that is long overdue for change. The United States will not hesitate to speak out against these biases in defense of our friend and ally, Israel. Well, frankly, this is the kind of leadership I was looking to get uh, instead of the old leadership that bowed down to the U.S. wishes and allowed the Security Council to, to bash Israel as much as they wanted. So I have to say this is quite encouraging, and I'm interested and very intrigued in what the future holds and where this will lead. You know, I've been listening to some commentary on uh, the uh, visit of Benjamin Netanyahu uh, over the last few days that it may have been a staged a type of speech that was designed to get the uh, right wing off Mr. Netanyahu's back back in Israel. So I'm kind of interested to see where this uh, push for peace will actually lead. You know, someone had uh, mailed me and wrote a comment asked if I thought it was possible that Mr. Trump might create this peace process, but it fall apart and later be confirmed by someone out of the European Union. Well, that is totally possible. That very well may be the case. In fact, that wouldn't shock me a bit that if, in fact, a peace process was started by uh, Mr. Kushner and it did fall apart and Mr. Trump just all of a sudden said, you know what, we're going to go ahead and drop this from our agenda. It's too much. And that would be when someone out of the European Union would come forward and bring this peace pro proposal uh, back to the forefront. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but I certainly would not rule it out either. But I just wanted to bring this speech to you and let you know that we as Americans are standing up to the oppressive terrorists in the Middle East and around the world. And frankly, I am totally for Mr. Trump going and finding out where the, the undocumented immigrants are here in America and making them get in the country legally. You know, I'm for immigration. I'm just not for at all having illegals in our country who ha simply haven't gone through the paperwork and the right procedures. And, you know, I'm also for making each individual who wants to come to this country uh, pledge an allegiance to it and also learn the language. You, can, you shouldn't be, be, you know, you simply should not be given status to this country unless you are willing to do some work to get here and also to stay here. You need to learn what this country is all about. You need to pledge allegiance to it, and you need to learn the language. And then after that, you should be given a test period of a certain amount of years before you actually given legal citizenship to into this country. But that's my two cents, and uh, I just feel that we need to go back to our grassroots of why this country was created. And it has nothing to do with allowing terrorists to come into this country or undocumented people who simply, we don't know if they're terrorists or not. So let me be clear, I'm not trying to keep anybody out. I just want people in here who are going to love this country and are going to pledge their allegiance to it. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. You know, there's something much worse than the tribulation period. And you know, that is going to hell. The Bible says that if you don't know Jesus as Savior, and yes, He is the only way to heaven. 
You can't get there by any other way. You can't get there by Buddha or by Allah or by any of these other gods that are out there. Jesus is the only one who claims that he is the only way to heaven. And if you're going to get there, you're only going to get there through him. And the Bible is clear that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, call upon the Lord, ask him to forgive you of your sins, and seek him from this day forward. And you Christians, you need to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide and get it in the hands of every single person that you know. There is a free version and there's also a paid version. Now the free version is written in nine different languages. You can download that readily. You can also get a paid version, which is a paperback version, that you can purchase and go down to the description below this video and you can find out where to go to get either of those copies. But do yourself a favor, get it into the hands of every lost person that you know, for it's everlasting too late. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.